Okay, look at my scene here. All of the walls are green. Now, if I go to this texture and say green is now blue and save it. Now let's go back to the game and now all the walls are blue. It's a pretty cool technique, right? You could probably think for a lot of reasons to do that. Maybe, you know, because in terms of maintenance, it's much easier to manage the color palettes if you've got hundreds of sprites. Or maybe in the later levels, you want to make all the walls dark red because you're getting near the final pops or something. So this is a technique called color maps or color indexing maps. So let me show you how it works. So to explain the technique, I'm just rendering the same thing twice here. On the right with the color map, and then on the left, obviously no color map. And then this gizmo over here is showing you how the red channel indexes into our color map texture. So here, all this palette, this bright color stuff, that is literally the color texture that I give to the graphics card. It's just a 16 by 16 sprite with one pixel for all the colors. And then as the red channel moves, you can see how it literally just points into different parts of the color texture. So when red is zero, we're going to index into the black of the color texture. And when red is 255, we index into the white of the color texture. And then you can see if I just use the picker here, I don't know, let's point on this guy, right? So, so if I point on this arrow here, you can see the red channel value is 216, which indexes into that yellow color. And you can see on the right there, yep. That's correct, that's the yellow color. And then another example, let's say, what color is this line here? So that's red channel 40, which indexes to look like that kind of light brown color. And you can see on the right, yep, that looks okay. So what's happening is that we're using the red channel to index into the color map texture. And also notice that because my texture is only 16 by 16, there's some wiggle room here, right? So if we are at red channel 57, it's green, and we're still green all the way up to 69. Okay, so to implement this, first grab a big sprite and put it in front of your entire scene. And we're gonna add a shader to it. We're gonna give it a parameter of a color map texture. So you can see here's my color map texture. It's a 16 by 16 sprite with the color palette that I wanna use. And then in the shader, we're gonna say sample the screen UV. So this is what it's gonna read. It's gonna read one of these red values. And then it's gonna say, okay, now your color is going to be what you just read, but then index into that, that color map. And that gives us this. So yeah, that's a technique. It's pretty simple, very effective, um, nothing much to it. So let's go over some common bugs or issues you might have. Let's start off with this, right? The Godot guy's here and he's all messed up. And that's because we're applying the color map globally. So how do I escape something from the color map? Well, that's actually really simple. All you have to do is go to your color map. So let's change this to return the red channel and the green channel. And then here, now we wanna just say data.or because we still wanna use the red channel to index for color. Then we're gonna be very clever and say, if data.g is greater than zero, then discard. And now look, we only care about things that are in the color channel. And how that's working is because if something has any green, any even, even one bit of green, and most textures, most colors in, on your monitor are always gonna have a little bit of green, at least one bit, then it gets taken out of the color shade. So that's a really, really handy way to have things being ignored by the color shader. Because else you have to kind of say, apply that color shader per sprite. And I've tried that, it gets really tedious. It's much nicer just to apply it globally and then use this trick to get rid of exceptions. Okay, so what if you want to apply the colors in the Godot editor, or you want to maybe change them dynamically? Pretty easy. You just use a gradient texture. So if you go down here in Godot, you know, when you create textures, you can say new gradient, and then you just, you know, type them in here. Uh, and you could change this at runtime. It's very cheap. Yep, so that's how you would apply them dynamically or in the editor, you know? And then lastly, you might be thinking, okay, we use the red channel, we use the green channel. What about the blue channel? Isn't it wasteful not to use it? Well, you can see here, now I'm using the blue channel and uh, I use it just to kind of create a, a weird shiny effect on it, you know? So, so I'm just saying, you know, you can get really abstract and, and do really cool things, you know? You got a blue channel, maybe you can put whatever into it and uh, use it for something. Here's color palettes in action and Space Bandit. You should wishlist it, by the way, links in the description. Um, yeah, so I hope that explained color pads to you. Thanks for watching.